So hit that fucking sub button. So for anyone who didn't catch, the um, the ADL released a recent statement to a bit of controversy. Um, a lot of people are calling this um, the ADL backing uh, Israel as an ethnostate. We're going to read it and we're going to see where the sort of truth lies. For the people who don't know, the ADL is the um, fucking... It's the Defense League or something? Um, wait, who are we? Let me check. Just double check. Any defamation league? Am I dumb? I think I'm dumb. No, it's the Anti-Defamation League. Yep, cool. I just want to make sure I didn't get that fucking right. Um, now, um, one of the things that the ADL does that's really good is basically like, hey, look, here's a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of shit. Oh, where are we? So I've got the... Um, is it the... ADL hate... Sorry. Hate Symbols Database. This is one of the things that people know that they've done. It's actually quite good. This is actually surprisingly like, um, has got most things and they try to keep it up to date um, with all of the the Jewish shit, um, like Jewish, anti-Jewish, like Nazi shit. Um, and so anti-racist code word for anti-white, um, anti-sharp injury. It keeps it all up to date. It's all in like, um, thing, one of the ones that they got in trouble for was um, having Pepe the Frog as a symbol. So if you've heard of the ADL before, that's probably why. Do they have ACAP there? What? Is that all cops are bastards? Yeah, one second. I swear to God, I saw... Yeah, yeah, it's there. Um, oh, okay. So I think that the reason they got there uh, is the slogan of longstanding in skinhead subculture because non-racist skinheads may use the acronym as well as racist skinheads. It should be carefully judged in the context in which it appears. A lot of oh. their stuff's actually really good in terms of having it, um, like the way they sort of cash it out, like the stuff that's like can be good, can be bad, because they know which ones are generally going to be used in certain contexts. So um, where are we? I think this one has... Is this a Pepe yet? No. Because I know the Pepe one... A lot of people got mad at them for putting the Pepe one in, but they were actually kind of right to from memory. Um, or is it done by... No. It's got all the, like, all the runes, all the racist ones. Um, where are your researching tools? Okay, LM. See, Moon Man's there. That's a fucking really sneaky one for y'all who aren't caught up. Um... There are some really good, like, there's, they've got the really obvious ones, like the, the National Socialist Movement, um, like the, the ones that most people know. See, here we go. Um, common hand gesture used in a, in a 4 can chan trolling campaign, so they knew it was from a trolling campaign. Claim 2017 had been appropriated as a symbol meaning white power, used by many on the right, not just extremists, for the pur purpose of trolling liberals. The symbol eventually came to be used by actual white supremacists as well. Cautions to be used. See, it's, they're pretty good at cashing it out. If you're ever unsure, this is actually a really good database to go to and see if... I should check out element of PQRS. Did we go... Yeah, Pepe the Frog, see? Um... This pop internet movie uses a variety of contexts. In a variety of contexts, in recent years, it's also been appropriated by white supremacists, particularly those not right who use it in racist, semantic, or anti other hateful contests. Right. So this is just generally pretty good. Um, ADL does a pretty good job at keeping up with the Nazi shit. Right. Um, now I know that there is some some times that people call them out for uh, like the whole equivocation between anti-Israeli being anti-Semitic, but most times when you look at that, they're actually just being anti-Semitic. So a lot of people, for example, take up um, problems with the fact that these guys designate the Nation of Islam as a hate group. And if you read into Nation of Islam quotes and Louis Farrakhan quotes, you would know that it's a very good reason as to why they're on the ADL's list. Um, now, let's have a look at this article they put out. Response to common inaccuracy. Binational slash one state solution. Inaccuracy. The concept of a two-state solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not feasible and is outdated. Instead, there should be one state, a binational state, that would be compromised of Israeli and the West Bank and Gaza Strip that would protect the respective Jewish, Israeli and Palestinian identities and the interests of its citizens. Response. The proposal of a binational state or a one-state solution is nothing less than an indirect attempt to bring about an end to the state of Israel as the national homeland of the Jewish people. 
The State of Israel was established out of the nationalist aspirations of the Jewish people and an international recognition of the rights of Jews to a homeland following millennia of persecution. While a Jewish state, Israel's founding principles guarantee equal treatment and protection for all its citizens, regardless of religion, ethnicity, or colour. A binational state, in principle and in practice, would mean the ideological end of the Jewish state of Israel and the lead to the forsaking of Jewish nationalism and identity, along with its special status as a refuge for Jews fleeing persecution. Furthermore, binationalism is unworkable given current realities and historic animosities. With historically high birth rates among the Palestinians and a possible influx of Palestinian refugees and their descendants now living around the world, Jews would quickly become a minority within a binational state, thus likely ending any semblance of equal representation and protections. In this situation, the Jewish population would be increasingly politically and potentially physically vulnerable. This is a little bit yikes. We are going to come back to this. It is unrealistic and unacceptable to expect the State of Israel to voluntarily subvert its own sovereign existence and nationalist identity to become a vulnerable minority within what was once its own territory. Moreover, as Israeli analyst Yossi Klein Halevi has argued, the notion that Palestinians and Jews who can't even negotiate a two-state solution could coexist in one happy state is so ludicrous that only the naive or the malicious would fall for it. Within certain intellectual circles, the call for a binational Israeli-Palestinian state has gained traction. While couching their arguments in terms of egalitarianism and justice, the proponents of a binational state are predominantly harsh critics of Israel and use this proposal as a vehicle to further their advocacy against an independent Jewish state. Some nationalist Israelis who also call for a one-state solution, whereby Israel would annex the West Bank and Gaza Strip and create a one-state incorporating this entire territory. Such a concept is equally unacceptable as Israel would have to sacrifice its status as both a Jewish and democratic state. Were Israel to absorb these territories and make the residents of the West Bank and Gaza Strip full of citizens of Israel, demographic realities would lead to an effective end of the Jewish state of Israel. Should Israel annex these territories, yet deny the non-Jewish residents full citizenship, Israel would no longer be a democratic state. Either choice is inimical to Israel's founding ideology. Just any just solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict should be based on two sides living side by side in peace and security. Right. So, everyone here, can you tell me why this might be a little bit yikes? Anyone in chat? Oh, who the fuck is reclaiming Echoes? No one? Okay. So, there's a couple of things here that are like red flags for a lot of people. Let's point them out. Um, so, the State of Israel was established out of the national aspirations for Jewish people. The, uh, where are we? Binationalism is unworkable given current realities and historic animosities. Motivic, this isn't necessarily ethno-nationalism, and we'll get as to why. Um, with a possible influx of Palestinians and their descendants... Birth rate memes. Yep, the birth rate memes is very cringe. This is a short article that is very poorly worded. We're going to go over a very short history of Israel, and we're going to get to why I get what they're saying. It's put poorly. I understand the notion here. Right, so... For anyone who doesn't know... Um, let me just double check this because I don't want to fuck this up. And if any, I, I know for a fact, if I um, fuck this up, I know that Eris is going to look at this tomorrow or the day after, um, right? Uh, so for anyone who is, uh, can I, is this going to work? Is it doing it? Yeah, there we go. Let's make sure. Cool. Is it, did I spell that right? Is that the right link? Make sure it's the right link. No, I did fuck that up. Um, how did I fuck that up? I want to make sure I'm getting this one right. Oh, she has a TV. That's right. Okay. Um, so, 
make sure you follow Eris because she's going to go over this after I do. And um, she's far more informed on this, okay? However, I'm just going to give an initial take just in case she does not. Um, I've told her I'm going over it. Um, I know she's, like, really tired, though. She's had a fucking hell of a day. Um, but basically, what needs to be understood here is that Jews are... One of the most historically, if not the most historically persecuted sets of people um, in the world. I'm trying to find. Um, where is it? Yeah, this one here. I don't want to spend my weekend doing chores. You know, Chris, a little hard work can do wonders. Just look at how they built the pyramids. They say all peoples must go through some hard times. Well, we Jews are getting ours out of the way early. From here on out, it's going to be nothing but smooth sailing. That's easily one of Family Guy's fucking best bits, like full stop, right? Because it's never been more of an understatement. Okay? Um, <laughs> so, like... Going after, like, World War One, the Jews, a lot of, like, Jewish people were flooding into, um, flooding into Palestine to try and set up, um, uh, an, a, a Jewish, not necessarily, like, a Jewish state, but wanted a place where the Jewish people could have a place to return, right? Because most people of most religions, of most races, have somewhere they can go when shit goes haywire, right? Like, white people ain't gonna be stuck nowhere if there's, like, a white genocide going on, okay? There's plenty of places white people can go. Same things with, um, it's oppression on both sides of my family. Oh, Sam, no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, that's, that's a, oh, I feel sorry for you, buddy. <laughs> Um, well, not sorry for you, but you know, that's fucking holy shit. That's some history right there. Um, and, um, this, um, this basically led to a lot of like, um, Jewish people and Palestinians coming into conflict come around World War II time when you had a lot more Jewish people heading out of, um, communities for a pretty good reason um i'm sure everyone here has heard of the fucking holocaust at this point right um and afterwards you had i believe was, was it sykes picot i think it was sykes picot make sure i am saying this right no it's not this was post sykes picot i'm dumb secret adventure made between world war ii and great britain yeah 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 so this was um this was one in the first place so you had Palestine, the Mandate Palestine, after sykes Pico, and then it was the post-World War II one that split um, Mandate Palestine into Israel-Palestine. Um, my history is a little bit rough on this. But basically, the idea here is that um, everyone else has somewhere that they can go or some place that they have if shit goes haywire. The Jews do not. Um, a lot of Jewish nationalists pointed this out, and to be clear... To most leftists who don't know this, sykes Picot was after World War I. Yeah, I know, I goofed, okay? I, there's so many fucking white boy treaties where they've decided to shape the world so many fucking different ways I got them mixed up, okay? Sue me. All right? The fucking Brits have redrawn the line so many fucking times at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Would you be for, like, natives, Native Americans, like, getting a piece of land and making their own country, or, like, Armenians, who are also been, like... Or whatever. Well, I mean, like, Native Americans already have that for the most part, right? Yeah. I mean, like, their own nation. Their own full-on nation? Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't necessarily like, be against that, no. And it seems like they already have, like, massive fucking... Um, yeah. No, not really. What the fuck? Wait, they have... So, don't they have, like, um... This, from what I understand, there's the... Um... It's not fully separate. But they have their own laws and stuff. We have land. That's true, and that's also and in America still. where they've had like troubles, right? I wouldn't be against it, but this is like I'm just like pointing out that like you, un useless, yeah, useless garbage, argument, yeah. unusable, useless garbage land. Yeah, that's true. But like the um, the idea here is, and this is the is that like the native like um the Jews are like historically oppressed. Like by almost every single civilization, um, and that it's because it's a non-ethnic position. This is the same as uh, 
because it's a, like a religious set, right? Um, fuck, my brain just isn't working today. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, and yeah, they need to solve that. From what I understand, um, didn't wasn't there like a case one, Sammy, where y'all get like a fuck ton of land, like actual good usable land, um, a Supreme Court case, or is that just like one specific Oklahoma is symbolic? Oh, so you aren't actually... There's, I thought they were actually, like, not actual. Oh, that fucking sucks. I thought you all were actually getting, like, a fuck ton of land. Because I remember people being fucking turbo mad about that one. Um, but, yeah, basically, Jewish people, historically oppressed, need a, a place to have a right to return. Um, Israel is that place that... And in this article, right, where are we? The article, common response to inaccuracies, right? Um, what they'd be referring to here is the fact that generally when you have kids, it's, it's, about, it's about which courts have jurisdiction in criminal cases. Oh, okay. If we were, I wouldn't still be in Cali. Fair call. Um, so the idea here is that one, this is about religion, right? So uh, Palestinian peoples, to be, if we have like a charitable reading of the article, because we can look at it, if we look at it on its face, let's be real, it looks really bad. Okay. When you're talking about historically high birth rates this is like the whole fucking like if you've heard the term like breed right breed is like <laughs> that's like a fucking red flags just flashing all over the place and this is what it is here right um basically palestinians are uh, a certain religion breed <laughs> um why am islamic right um, usually Islamic religions, and that the Jewish homeland is uniquely a place for Jews to return to, right? And one of the things that they're worried about is you have a massive amount of Palestinians, um, Palestinian Arabs, because obviously, like, you, there's, like, a whole blend of different things. Like, most people refer to um, the Arabs in, in, in Israel as, as, as Arabs because there's, like, a mix. But basically, um, there's, like, an issue where Jewish people have to worry about their, their ability to have self-determination. And this is written into their constitution, and it's what, the, what the, the place is based off of, right? But the thing they're concerned about is if they become like a minority population in their own state, that they could lose that place to which they have a right to return. And with, if you look at the US, if you look at everywhere else, anti-Semitic hate crimes are on the rise. This is the concern that a lot of Jewish people and a lot of Israeli people are having, is that they really need to worry about having that right of return at these times so they can get in and um, out of their country and into um, their quote-unquote homeland really quickly for if shit starts to kick off again, right? Especially in the US, we look at um, anti-Semitic hate crimes over time. The US. This should be fucking scary, right? Oh, it's gone down. That's nice. Major anti incidents worldwide. But still, it's on the trend, right? Especially after 2008, it started going back on the trend from memory. No? 2013. I'm dumb. What's wrong with me? Um, Anti-Semitic incidents at record levels in the UK. Right? This is... um. This is, like, scary to any of these people. And especially, like, having this idea that, like, currently they have, like, a right to return a place. Yeah, it's the ADL stats. Um, was there a problem with the ADL stats on this? This one says commun Community Security Trust, right? This one's ADL, though. You're right in that one. Victims of hate crime. Jewish going up. That doesn't mean they're invalidated, though, Motivik, right? Because you can have, like, one of the things that I want to stop in its tracks is this idea that, like, we discard a source because of where it's from, right? If you see uh, it's, it's a weird person doing stuff who's been... Um, he's a good example, right? I'm trying to go over the Adrian Zenz data because I want to see how legitimate Adrian Zenz stuff is. Um... One person I am looking at right now who's writing about Adrian Zen's data is someone, as soon as I find it, um, is someone called Max Blumenthal. Max Blumenthal has done good journalism in the past. Max Blumenthal visited Russia in 2015. 
Max Blumenthal has done dog shit reporting since 2015. Okay. Um, and it was in Adrian Zenzo, we talking Uyghurs. That is correct. Um, so I'm trying to do my best research that I can into debunking Adrian Zenz because I want to see how much of an issue, um, how, if it's if it's an actual genocide, which Adrian Zenz data would imply, or a cultural genocide. Adrian Zenz is a hack. Why is Adrian? So the one the thing I want to know is why is Adrian Zenz a hack, right? People say Adrian Zenz is a hack, but whenever I ask them, the answer I usually get is pointing to very cringe, previous posts he's made about non-relevant topics had, that has nothing to do with his data, right? It doesn't invalidate it, but it means you just shouldn't assume it's valid. I disagree, Motovic. We shouldn't assume any data is is like the, the truth, but what we do is we've... we've Adrian Zenz is a very biased source, but his data isn't bad. Exactly. Biased sources can have good data, right? Senior fellow at Victims of Communism. Yes, I don't care where the source is from, right? What I care is how good is his methodology. We should look at who someone's bias is because we should understand that that might impact their data collection and look at it more closely, right? That's why you do a bias check in the first place is to check, hey, should I be really concerned about this? right? Um, Because you can usually save yourself some time. That doesn't mean it's going to be valid or invalid, but usually you look at bias because it's going to be an indicator of how much they're going to be fudging the numbers. And I've heard Zens fudge the numbers, but I haven't seen any good arguments as to how Zens has fudged the numbers. More so that Zens is, quote, the senior fellow at Victims of Communism, has said some really cringe stuff on on, on Christian values and bullshit like that, right? Um... And, and all this other weird shit, but I don't care what they said about this other stuff. I don't care what other stuff they've worked on. Um, all global victims of COVID-19 have been attributed to communism. <laughs> That's a good meme that has nothing to do with um, Adrian Zen's data on the um, birth rates in... Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the birth rate. Because, um, like, according to Zen's data, right, if I go back and I'll just quickly pull it up, just to make it really clear, right... This would, if we have a look at this source, and this is on the AP, right? I generally trust the AP to do very good work. Um, this is from Zen's, this is like just their, this is Xinjiang Statistical Yearbooks. We can see birth rate drops. Now, that's not that big a deal because from what you understand, they around 2017, they started enforcing um, the one-child policy in Xinjiang. But Zen's data would indicate that they're, Forcing, enforcing it very disproportionately, right? Um, so the problem is, is that we need to look at the methodology and to why it's bad in each specific instance because think tanks, like broken clocks can be stopped twice a day, right? Um, I guess, I'm guessing if a schizophrenic homeless person in Brooklyn throws a bottle at a Jewish and throws him the ADL, ADL is counting that. Is it? Is that in their methodology? Because that's what we should be doing. Um, we should be looking at, at if that is the case. That's why we look at bias, right? It's not we should just see that they're biased and invalidate what they have to say because that's not true at all and that's, how we shouldn't, that's not how we should handle anything. Broken clocks are right twice a day. Zens could be a dumb fuck and still get the right answer. Look, it's shit ton Zen's analysis. It's dog shit, but his data is legit. The problem is with single sources for the data shows that CPC in a lot of cases, data can be made to show anything through statistics in some point, like the percentage of IUDs in Xinjiang. Yeah, because we do understand, like I said before, is that when we do look at this, we do have to understand that they did start enforcing those policies in Xinjiang, right? Um, and that they might be playing up for lost time. But from what I've also seen is they're also loosening a significant amount of the policies on the Han, on the Han Chinese, right? Um, and strictly, more strictly enforcing them in Xinjiang. That's the problem, right? Um, but what, a lot of what he claims are solid, yeah. Because from what I can see, it's like, it's because if he's right, if Zenz's data is right, then there is a literal genocide going on, not just a cultural genocide. Um, so I'm trying to read more about it. And like I said, Blumenthal is one of the people who has been critical of Adrian Zenz. Um, and that's on my list of stuff to read. But Blumenthal is a quite an accurate source for a lot of claims. Um, so I'm skeptical going into it, but I will read what Blumenthal has to say and try and take it on its face and be charitable, right? Um, so just because it comes from the ADL doesn't mean the numbers are invalid. What we should look at is the methodology. So actually, while we're here... Um, let's see, research and tools, tracker of anti-Semitic incidents. What are their methods? 
The ADL's tracker of anti-Semitic incidents is a compilation of recent cases of anti-Jewish vandalism, harassment, and assault reported to or detected by the ADL. Um, so let's have a look at some of the things they're noting here. Zionism is Satanism, was found spray-painted on various pieces of public property around downtown Miami. Now, we understand that Zionism can be... Um, can, criticism of Zionism is being conflated here with anti-Semitism. But, that being said, Blumenthal and Zenz are one-to-one as far as legitimacy is concerned. Yeah, as far as I understand, that's true, right? That doesn't mean that either of their... My mileage may vary, but Bloom has been wicked wrong on an awful lot. True. Um, but from what I understand, a lot of Blumenthal's early work is good. And his later work is... He takes like a big dive. He does a Glenn, Glenn, a Glenn Greenwald. Um... Swatska stickers. Swatska's found drawn down the asphalt next to Mullerton School. Okay, this one's kind of cringe. Um, are they are they including these in their data set though? I wonder. Uh, like a graffiti. Because it should say what they commit. The anti it says anti semitic incidents. I said hate crime. Hate crime map. So wonder if it's going to count hate crime laws, hate crime data. Reported zero hate crimes, reported hate crimes. So let's have a look here. What was the, um, if we go back here. And we go tracker of anti-Semitic incidents. Okay. Let's have a look at the counting these as hate crimes. So if we look at April 11, 2021, Miami, Florida, the word Zionism was Satanism. Because this one is silly. Right? Because this could just be very well leftists talking about how they don't like Zionism. Let's have a look and see if they keep that on their hate crime monitor. So we go April 11, 2021 in Florida. Okay. Let's have a look at their hate crime map. Hate crime data. Let's have a look in Florida. Let's see. They're counting 2019. Okay, let's see if they had anything race one, anti anything anti Jewish. I want to see if there's anything anti, because all of these are looking like religion, race, religion, any of them anti Jewish? No. Anti Jewish? No. Jewish? No. It seems like this thing's only hate crimes, they're not even crimes. Georgia have anything? Atlanta. Nope. 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 We are having trouble here. Oh, I'm just zooming around the map. Yeah, those things aren't crimes or hate crimes, but it seems like they're just talking about anti-Semitic incidents. And that that's not what's being tracked on this map. Or well, they're talking... Oh, wait, no, they are tracking this as anti-Semitic incidents. Tripled in 2018. Let's have a look. Physical violence against Jewish people. Report. Last can you? Oh, yep. So they're including everything as separate things. Um. So yep, they're no they're noting violent incidents here. Yep. So they're separating what the anti-Semitic incidents are, separating them as violent incidents and for the different data. I wonder if they've got the uh the report on the website because I'm curious to see. If... 
I just want a report. Give me a big PDF with everything in it. <sighs> Anti-Semitism in the US. Let's have a look. Online Holocaust denial report card. <laughs> Um, with the report. Report. On campus, off campus, perpetrators. I just want like a big PDF with everything in it. Why can't you do this on the ADL? I feel like the ADL should be doing this. I bet there is a lot of online Holocaust denial. Fuck, the funniest one was actually... You remember how like uh, yesterday we were talking about um, Miles Power? He actually released like a video... That was really fucking good. Um, oh, he's right here. Um, I think it was like, was it yesterday or was it seven months ago? Am I dumb? Yep. This one here. This is very good. He's done some very good debunking of Holocaust denialism. And then he goes over Mike Enoch going over his stuff and pretty much laughs at how fucking stupid he is. So if you're in for like a, a ride on the on and Holocaust denial stuff, um, I highly recommend this and I highly recommend his entire series on the Holocaust denial stuff. But yeah, basically my point is, let's just not um fucking where... Like I wish they could just give like a better fucking... Is there like a full report? What is that the ideal heat map? On about 20, audit of anti-Semitic incidents, executive summary. Here we go, cool. <laughs> Case of harassment, 6%, nine causes of vandalism, and 19% increase. Yeah, so they track everything um, and note them as separate. Anti-Semitic assault, a 56% increase from 2018. Involved 99 victim, 95 victims and led to five deaths. More than half of the assaults nationwide took places in five boroughs in New York City. Well, I mean, that's where they are dense, so. Yeah, here we go. This is the kind of shit I want. This represents 13% of the total number of incidents. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, can you experience a significant number of anti-Semitic incidents? Yep, so the, if we have a look at the, where's, just give me a, is there a report? Methodology, let's have a look. The audit of anti-Semitic incidents is composed of criminal and non-criminal incidents of harassment, vandalism, and assault against individuals and groups as reported to the ADL by victims, law enforcement, and the media. It is not a public opinion poll or any effort to catalogue every expression of anti-Semitism. Incidents are defined as vandalism of property or harassment or assault of individual groups, or where either one, circumstances indicate anti-Jewish animus on the part of the perpetrator, or two, a reasonable person could plausibly conclude that they were victimised due to their Jewish identity. Vandalism against Jewish religious institutions or cemeteries may be included. The appearance of swastikas, which are generally interpreted by Jews to be in, uh, symbols of anti-Semitic hatred, are also included. Although some incidents are hate crimes, incidents included in the audit include non-criminal acts that rise to the level of an anti-Semitic incident as we define it above. ADL carefully examines all of the credibility of all the incidents, including the obtaining the independent verification where possible. The audit excludes the following type of incidents. Anti-Semitic activities or statements which take place privately or in a manner that require potential victims to opt in to access them. Instances of discrimination, unless the discrimination is, ver um, is accompanied by verbal harassment. General expressions of white supremacy or other hateful ideologies, unless those expressions include overt anti-Semitic elements. Also, they're actually excluding stuff they could probably include as well.
The ADL is careful not to complete general criticism of Israel or anti-Israel activism with anti-Semitism. However, Israel harassment, Israel related harassment of groups or individuals may be included when the harassment incorporates established anti-Jewish references, accusations, and or conspiracy theories, or when they demonize American Jews for their support of Israel. We have also included cases of picketing of religious Jewish or cultural institutions for their purported support of Israel. So it actually seems like they've done a hopefully pretty good job at can uh, um, accounting the stuff. Um, major findings. Oh, that's increased by six percent. Vandalism increased nineteen percent. That fucking assault one, man, fifty-six percent. That's a lot. Harassment, vandalism, assault. I wonder if they have it by percent density. Because obviously, like, this is just a population map. I hope everyone can see this, right? Is one thing you've always got to be really wary of. This comic here, always refer to it because it's very good, okay? <laughs> Most of the XKCD stuff is really interesting. But, like, keeping in mind that, like, when you look at maps like this, you've got to think about whether they're population maps or not, okay? And this is absolutely that. Because that just isn't helpful. G'day cunts, if you fucking like that, so hit that fucking sub button. Hit the like button. Comment down below. There's probably going to be a Chud's fucking arguing there. Just give him a bit of a fucking biff, eh? Let's go, champ. Listen to my fucking music here.